Having regular elections every four to five years does not mean you have a democracy. Clean and fair elections matter. Clean and fair elections matter even more when you don't have them. My fellow Malaysians, April the 28th, 2012 marks the date when Bursay 3 will occur. Now, as Bursay 3.0 rallies will be held simultaneously in 11 cities nationwide, while similar protests will be held across 72 cities around the world. And they've been gathering since last night. There are thousands here already, many of them in their yellow shirts, yellow being the colour of the Bursay. Ladies and gentlemen, Bursay in Malay means clean. That is our movement for clean and fair elections. It started in the year 2007 with the opposition party and several NGOs who decided to start the movement for free and fair elections. Credit must go to them because prior to this, despite the elections being flawed, no one actually thought of putting clean and fair elections on the agenda for change. I came into the picture sometime in 2010, and Bursay then became um, a movement run by civil society purely. The politicians stepped away, and the movement built momentum. Initially, very little interest in free and fair elections. Uh, I was concerned being the only one talking about elections. It's a boring subject, generally speaking, unless they're not clean and fair. So it was very difficult. We tried negotiating. We tried having meetings with the uh, election commission to no avail. So we had our first Bursay rally, July 2011. We had, that would be the second one, sorry. When I was involved, that would be the first. Then we had one last year, in April 2012, and that's what you have just seen. Now, what's interesting about Bursay as a movement is that it didn't just involve Malaysians in Malaysia. It involved Malaysians all over the world. On April 28, 2012, not only did Malaysians gather in Kuala Lumpur, and several other cities in Malaysia. They gathered in more than 80 cities across the world. Earlier, you saw Adelaide, you saw Melbourne. This is Kuala Lumpur. And of course, there were nearly 250,000 people if you saw the crowd earlier on. But the police unleashed tear gas, chemical-laced water, and um, I gather you're not really an activist until you have experienced that. So I've experienced that twice. But that's what happened. 250,000 people, tear gas shot into the crowd, but they moved away peacefully, and remarkably, there were very little injuries, there were very few injuries caused as a result of the retreating crowd. But injuries were caused on that day in April 2012, and that was by the police. Untold force was used by the police on the supporters of Bursay II. The Human Rights Commission of Malaysia subsequently found that the police had used excessive force. That's about Bursay, the movement for free and fair elections. But let me tell you, Bursay then became more about democracy in general. It was more than a movement for free and fair elections. And the reason for that was, there was a huge cry for change. Uba is the Malay word for change. That's the second word you've learned today in Malay. Uba rang out throughout the whole country. It was the rallying call of the opposition. 
But more than that, it was the feeling that everyone felt. Even those who would have voted for the National Front, the governing party, wanted a change in governance. They were sick of the corruption. They were sick of the abuse of power. They were sick of numerous deaths in custody, selective prosecution, rising crime rates, etc., etc., etc. Now, what was interesting was that this movement that involved global bursi, it was called global bursi, it is called global bursi, Malaysians overseas. Malaysians actually came back. By the way, we had our elections nine days ago which is why I can report hot off the press what happened. Malaysians overseas came back in thousands to vote. And why did they do that? Because they had no confidence in the system of overseas and postal votes that the election commission had come up with for them. So instead, they chose to come back in droves to vote. It was a first. And for the first time, we had an 85% voter turnout in Malaysia. First time in history. Because, Berse, we had said to the people, come out in droves. Our system is bad. It is flawed. There's fraud in the system. You can fight it if you come out in droves. And they came out in droves. But unfortunately, we could not fight all of the fraud. Now, the system is completely against the opposition. It's like pushing a boulder uphill. What were the problems? Media. A mainstream media that was so biased, and it's not just bias, there were lies. You know, it happens in so many other countries. You had machinery, the government machinery that was abused, for the purposes of the elections, and that has been going on for the longest time. You had tons of money poured into the system. Money for projects, all of it, part of the electioneering. Someone actually estimated, a political scientist, estimated that that sum could have been as high as 57 billion ringgit, which is about nearly 20 billion US dollars from the time this prime minister had taken over for four years. So that was another thing. Then there's malapportionment. And let me tell you how malapportionment works. These are the results. And what you see there is that the opposition won the popular vote. If you look at nationwide, Pakadhan Riot is the opposition. They got 50.87. Barisa National, 47.38. Now let me tell you how that translates into seats that they won in federal parliament. Barisa National got 133 seats. Pakatan Rayat got 89 seats, although they won the popular vote. That's the effect of malapportionment, which is why I'm saying that from the word go, from the word go, the opposition is up against a huge impediment. Now, we also have an electoral roll issue, and this is where the Election Commission, who is the election management body, has failed completely in its duty. We actually have foreigners who were given instant ICs or citizenships for votes. That was another problem that we had, which, of course, if you can say to me, Ambika, surely not. This cannot be happening. E, it doesn't even happen in blankety-blank country. But it happens. As we speak, there is a Royal Commission of Inquiry going on in East Malaysia where there is evidence to show that for the past 20 or 30 years, in the state of Sabah, there have been many instances, a project called Project IC, which was to give instant citizenships to foreigners and they, so that they could vote. So it's not far-fetched. Now, what happens? We had indelible ink, which was not indelible. It washed off with advance voting, which was one week before the elections, and again washed off on polling day. Any EC 
Worth its salt would have resigned with such disgraceful, disgraceful uh, instances of incompetence. So indelible ink didn't work. The point about indelible ink was to stop phantom voting, double voting. That failed completely. So these elections, ladies and gentlemen, as far as we're concerned, were fraught with so many uh, uh, instances of fraud. But what was interesting was the reaction of the people of Malaysia. They actually came out to protect their elections. They were there on, at the polling stations, guarding boxes, ballot boxes, trying to stop funny boxes coming in, making sure the process was clean. The citizens took it upon themselves. We also had a citizen observer mission who did a wonderful job. We had about 2,000 people on the ground and they did a brilliant job. Why? Why do we need to do all of this? when in fact it should be the election commission who should be ensuring the integrity of our elections. I don't have much time, but I'm going to finish with this. This, we predicted, would be the dirtiest elections we ever saw. It surpassed even what we had anticipated. But what we are going to do is this. We are going to set up a people's tribunal. That's what Bursi is going to do. There are already objections coming from the Election Commission. I just read today. There's going to be strong objection to that. What we are going to do is we're going to gather all the evidence of fraud that is out there. And we are going to evaluate that evidence. And I was grateful yesterday because there was a session about how you can verify videos and things that are out there. And we're going to get a panel, a good panel of people, including people from overseas who are experienced in elections. And we're going to get them to sit and have a people's tribunal. Let me tell you, the people are not happy, generally, with the results. This is what happened after the elections. This is one of the rallies. Thousands, 120,000 people filled that stadium because people were unhappy with the results. And that continues. In Penang, another 120,000. People don't do that unless they're really unhappy with the result. So this is something the government has to deal with. But what we want to do is to get the truth out there. We want to, do, uh, to, to ascertain exactly what happened. We want to ascertain the instances of fraud. We want to do a thorough examination of all the evidence out there. Why don't you go to court, you might say. There is a procedure to go to court, but it is a restricted procedure. Each candidate can go in relation to their constituency. What the People's Tribunal wants to do is to do a complete, uh, an overall picture with all the evidence out there. But we can see that they're going to try and stop us. And this is where we would ask you, the journalists here, please come and be a part of these proceedings. Be there. Be there to record the evidence that we take. This is the only way we know how to arrive at the truth. And that, for us, is critical. John F. Kennedy said about Winston Churchill that he mobilized the English language and sent it into battle. We want to mobilize the truth and send that into battle because we think that's far more powerful. But I know that those who commit fraud are very good at hiding it too. We know that. So we need help in using the tools that were suggested yesterday to try and get as much information as we can. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's one more thing that I would like to say, and it is this, that this whole point about foreigners being given uh, uh, citizenship for votes, or identity cards for votes. It is something we are also investigating. Now, for me, that is another form of trafficking. We are concerned that the foreign missions who have cit their citizens being used in this illegal fashion have said nothing. We find that strange. And there is no one who's prepared to come out and say, we will investigate this. 
In fact, the Election Commission, who ba basically behaves like a government department, has come out and said that everything was fine with these elections. Anyone who says there's anything wrong with these elections, we're going to take action against you. Is that how a responsible election commission behaves? Ladies and gentlemen, UBA is important for us. UBA is change. Change is happening, but it must be enduring change, which is why I agreed with the previous speakers when they said it has to come ground up because that is the most enduring form of change. We need to educate our people. That's another thing that we have to do. But first, we want to know the truth about the 13th general elections. Thank you. Thank you.